people ask how we write our stitch instructions. Well, as they say with children, it takes a village. And with us, it takes nine of us to do this. So um, I obviously design and, um, and, and I then ask Georgie very often to draw it onto the linen and I do that myself through a light box. And then I stitch a piece. And I have to say, I do take forever because I really want to get this right the first time. Um, although I have so enjoyed stitching these, I have done them twice and also the mirror frame as well. So, um, and of course I like to test stitch. So I do like to stitch everything twice, but if I get it so that I'm not pleased with it the first time, I can't let it rest. Um, so I normally design by stitching the whole piece and then I go back to any areas I'm not so keen on and try and balance the design out. And the idea behind my designs is that when the wind's blowing, these trees are moving, these trees of life are moving, and I've just taken a snapshot on the way past. So it should look like it was moving before I stitched it, and it's about to move off. So these little birds and that fox should just be about to run away. So that's the idea behind it. And it's something that my son imprinted on my brain 20 years ago when he was at art college. So um, hopefully that works for you as well. So then we, um, then I take photographs all the way through stitching when I test it the second time and I take step-by-step -step pictures for every single thing I do, which I then send to Georgie, Georgina, our in-house artist, and then she converts them into stitch instructions, which really are based on the printed linen. So I don't know where that one's gone now, I'll just show it to you, I should show you any really, but you can see that that correspond to the lines that are printed on the linen. So the idea is that we show you exactly from the very first stitch, we show you whereabouts on the piece you are, and then from the very first stitch, you're shown how to go step by step across his inner ear, then his outer ear, always working the background to the foreground. And you can see that this is a very, very rough thing because I've got all my um, figure numbers on here. So you can see that the stitch instructions, you know, go figure one to however many you take for each animal. And some of these, uh, these pages, which will end up as A4 size, so they'll end up slightly smaller. Um, they've got so many illustrations in, we have to refer to them with words. So you have the instructional words in between, but this is basically the layout copying the photographs of my actual stitching. So I know exactly I put my finger here to lay that thread down because as you come down his chest, it's really important to keep that stitch direction. And these are the lines printed on your linen so that you actually know where you're going to go. I'm just going to get that linen. So that the printing on the linen is actually the same as the printing on here. So when you actually see where you've already stitched, you'll know that that refers to this part here. So when you actually have it on the frame, it relates very easily to this piece here. The illustrations are the way up that I think you should be stitching it. So most of this piece actually is just facing you so that you're going to be looking at the image as you do it. So, um, and I'll take you to the simplest one first and then progress through the animals. So. You actually don't work from the top to the bottom necessarily, unless you particularly want to. And it's just a skill set that you build up. So hopefully everybody will feel comfortable when they get to the more complicated peacock and pea hen. And, um, and this, this, these drawings, by the way, are then refined to show where you stitched before and what you're stitching now. So if you can see that gray there, that's an already stitched area. So as you progress through the piece, you'll see that we've got areas here which show where, where your stitches were before and where you're going to go now. So we're now on um, figure 60 and we've only got to his belly. So <laughs> it, takes, it takes forever, but um, go back to his head for the last little bit and there's the whole bind stitch along here. And that's 81 figures and we're still going strong. So you can see that that is step by step. Now, when we have reached this stage, then Georgie goes back through everything, 
colouring it in. So then it's all hand coloured and it, it, that's it, it looks amazing and they're coloured to the specific colours of each design. So on this design, um, you've already had a practice linen in general colours to work out the stitches and then the instructions show you where to place those stitches on this particular shape. So long and short stitch onto a hip of a, of a near hind leg worked and this is how to lay the thread to keep the direction of the stitches and to keep it flowing. Because I know that um, a lot of people when I first started teaching said to me that it was long and short stitch that killed it for them with cool work. They did not like long and short stitch as soft shading but honestly it really really is easy with wool because the wool is almost designed to soft shade and mix for you so on these pieces you can see the soft shading and then you just add a few little details in the single thread which is a particular arts and crafts technique just adding a little bit more after you've finished where's another one Karen there you go there's the pied woodpecker and um, so on this one you can see I've worked uh, this, this gingery colour on one side and the green on the other, but then added little strokes of the other browns within that, or rather over the top of it. So you sort of layer up with the effect. I'll find a better one. Here you go. It looks really complicated when you actually look at it, but when you actually work it and you just put in these two rather clumsy colours and then come back in, you can actually cover any mistakes with the little touches of highlighting colour. So that little gingery bit here, these little gingery bits there, I tend to go for the slightly brighter um, colours, putting them in. But in the Arts and Crafts period, they would have put in some grey as well into the branches. Um, anything that you had left over as you were working each leaf can just go into the next door area. So on the technique for these branches is actually to work the background colour. So this is uh, 244 in the dark green here. And then you come back in and add little strokes of uh, the brown over any errors that you've done. And you can see this paler, uh, beautiful yellow coming along here that I had left over from working this leaf. I just carried it across the back and just put in some little strokes of yellow dotting around over any mistakes that I might have made. And also I didn't know how to end this little bit. So I've just added a spider's web onto the end of him. And um, that's, I occasionally do that or I end up with a curl or a little detail of stem stitch over the top of anything. So with cool work, you don't really, um, you don't really pull anything out. You just usually go over the top with another colour. So, for example, on this one, I just went back in. I didn't really like the solidity of green along the edge, so I added the yellow over the top, and that just sort of complemented the odd leaf here. So I hope that shows you what we're up to now. You can see I'm becoming unstuck here, Karen. <laughs> um, but these are now um, at the next stage and we're finding everything, um, testing everything. Harriet in Memphis in Tennessee is testing, I'm testing, my friend Tina up the road is testing, Rowan's making more of the cushions. Um, we're having them, them framed as well so you can see how they work on a wall. There's lots of little frames and of course the big mirror frame. Um, and I nearly finished my second one, just double, double checking everything. So I hope that you're all gonna really enjoy those and we'll have a full video of how to do it as well as the practice living. I've really been enjoying drawing the Aesop's animals and we all hope that you enjoy stitching. Mm -hmm. At this stage I've obviously stitched the piece, backed it onto some wood, so I'm just going to show you the back and stitched it across and I very roughly made this first design, but we're going to back it onto a mirror next. I want to just backtrack though to show you what the um, instructions do for you, because the first area you work is the background. So you work the uh, tree trunks in two layers of double thread. So the first layer here, which is I think a 241, that uh, colour is just worked all the way down with long and short stitches. And those are all printed on for you um, here. So if you look down here, you'll see that that colour is all printed on. And then the second colour comes up through that 
and you just stitch in the opposite direction. And there's very explicit step-by-step -step instructions that Georgie and I have been working on for the last actually five months now. So, um, so it's very clear. So you work the tree trunks and then you work the um, inner frame around here because some of these leaves overlap the inner frame and we work on the rule of background before foreground. So, so you work this uh, green inner frame. You can leave the yellow one till later when you finish to have a very neat finish. Then the um, leaves are mostly in long and short buttonhole stitch. So I have a great way of showing you how to do that that I'll film later. And um, then it's just stem stitch down the middle of these leaves and most of them have a little bit of satin stitch. So they're very, very simple. So it's um, tree trunk, long and short stop, sh stitch in double thread and then the inner frame, then the long and short buttonhole stitch, worked, working the background before the foreground, a little bit of stem stitch, a little bit of satin stitch and there you go. Now this leaf obviously is worked over the top of the, of the branch and the squirrel, so on this leaf we would leave him till later. So when you've worked the uh, leaves and this acorn and all the background behind the squirrel, so everything except for this yellow leaf, then you start with the tail and that's just long and short stitch, soft, soft shading and as usual you start in the middle, work to one side, work to the other and then in sections of colour that you can see going down here you just go through with the shading and that's pretty easy to be honest. It doesn't look it here because the, the actual threads going through each other give you another dimension. You don't even have to try to make that a subtle change. The colours do that for you and the technique. So then you work along his back and down his belly, on his throat and then his head down through the um, arms here, well his forelegs really and then his hind leg and then you pop in a bead and you have made this area. So then um, on the instructions, I take you to the, a very similar animal, the similar techniques for that animal. So if you're a beginner, you would go to the fox or the hare next because the techniques here are very similar to the ones in the squirrel. So it's not only the colors are the same, the techniques are the same as well. So you can work the fox next, the tail is very similar, or the hair next, and, um, and then by then your skills will have built up. One technique that I've used a lot on this design is to keep a very subtle detail with single threads running through the double threads pre-worked. So the base colours go in so that the whole of those tree trunks is covered in colour, but when you finish off the long and short buttonhole stitch on this leaf, for example, you can use the last few threads just in short and long stitches down the tree trunk here. So again, with this, even this paler uh, yellow, you can just bring it through and you can travel up the back and use it in the top corners um, and the darker green as well. I've used that from this leaf. I just came across the back and put in one or two threads and I think that is a charming detail and I've learned that through studying the original pieces. So I've really enjoyed cracking the walls for the Aesop's Fables. This is currently a different kit, but we've got lots of the same colours as well as some silks as well. So I hope you enjoy stitching. Hello, I'm making a rare appearance in front of the camera to tell you a bit more about the subscription for this lovely Aesop's frame. We realised that this is quite a large design and we wanted to make it available to people who wanted to do smaller designs and also to make it a bit more affordable. So. Mum and I were talking about how it lends itself quite well to individual designs. We've got the fox down here, as we know, the peacock, the peahen and the peacock, all beautiful little features of this frame. So what we'll be doing is making this available as a subscription that you can look forward to every month. 